And I thought one thing I'd do this week, I'm testing out a few different pieces of this ultralight gear. Still keeping my pack well below 30 pounds. Today I've got a really ultralight tent with this z Pax duplex. Very, very ultralight, keeping weight fiber. Two-man tent, but for one guy it's really comfortable because you can put all your gear in there, you can sit up in there, you can change in there, whatever you want to do. If you get stuck in the rain in there, it's not so cramped and you can do what you want to do in there and still not get feel like you're trapped into a small space. And the climate insulated static V camo. And I stuffed in the top of the bag here the X Recon climate pillow. I'm gonna try that combination today. Thought I'd go ahead and give this one a shot. This has never been out of the package yet. The time to test stuff is probably not when you're in the field with it, but I'm on the Pathfinder School property, so it's not that big of a deal. It looks like it's fairly solidly made. It's a camo pattern it's called desert camo, but it matches pretty well out here. Just the same, and the color's really not that significant to me as long as it is not bright orange, really, as far as that goes. It looks like it's got plenty of space. So we'll blow this dude up, see how much that really takes to get that job done. Not bad. It sounds like you can force air out of it. You've got it quite full. But I'm sure that if you flip that valve, that's going to give you a dump. We'll find out in the morning on that. So there's our air mattress in pretty good shape there. Get our X Recon pillow and see what that looks like. Again, don't know. Yeah, close that dude down. Four chambers. Headspace in the middle. I'm gonna want to deflate that just a little bit. I can tell already, just because I know how I like my pillow. Good there. And then of course we got our Swagman roll as our top cover. So we're in pretty good shape. These carbon fiber poles seem to be holding up pretty good so far on this tent. I've used this quite a few times already. So when you're looking at this, you know, ultralight bag here, and I've got a Fell Raven bag here that I use quite a bit. I've got a big bag of food here. So at least three days worth of food in there, maybe four. A bag of spare clothing, socks, base layer for night sleeping, things like that. And then at the bottom, I've got the Swagman roll. And that pretty much empties out that main compartment other than my titanium shovel being in there and my titanium cook pot. That pretty much empties that backpack out other than external pockets and top pockets. And our sit pad and things like that are in the outside pockets. So we'll set this stuff on the inside so we can get to it when we need it tonight. Got our food bag right there. So our Swagman roll, we'll go ahead and pull him out of the bag. Again, I don't generally use this Swagman roll as a sleeping bag, I generally use it more of a blanket and just zip up a foot box on it partially, the way you'd zip up the sleeping bag to give myself a small foot box. And I use the rest of it in blanket fashion. It works pretty good. So I'm gonna tell you some things that I've kind of figured out along the way with this whole cook system type scenario. And it's very adaptable whether you want to go stainless steel or titanium. But this firebox is kind of the key to the whole thing. And this is the large firebox. This one is the titanium model. I'm going to take the skewers and things out of it for a minute. Because I carry a couple other odds and ends with me. I'm going to show you that so that you get an idea of what I'm talking about. And the weight differential is huge between the titanium and the stainless steel firebox. But... The firebox itself gives you the opportunity to have a, an open fire, per se, in an area that you might not be allowed to have an on-the-ground fire. So if I want to cook over open flames, 
the firebox makes it easy to do that. Again, the titanium is much lighter than the stainless steel version. Because you have lots of ways that you can adapt this tool, I also carry this alcohol burner with me. And I can use the alcohol burner as a standalone if I want to, just by adding two simple pieces that fit well in the firebox sleeve that I can cook directly on this with just a cup if I choose to do that, or just with my titanium pot if I choose to do that, and not have a windscreen. If I'm in an area that's protected in this vestibule or something like that, and I don't want to mess around with setting up a bunch of stuff. Now, if I'm going to cook for a longer time and I may change things on and off, I may have a pot on here one minute and a cup on here another minute, things like that, then this firebox itself can be adapted with two simple skewers and that's the whole beauty of this system is how adaptable it is for different things. And then you can actually drop a Trangia stove right inside that dude. And you can cook on top of it. Now, I also carry a titanium, in this case, grill plate. You could also carry the stainless steel version like the one we have on our website. Not a problem. But this allows me to not only cook at any size container I want to cook over the top of this firebox with negligible weight, it also allows me to cook on an open ground fire if I want to with small game. So really the adaptability of this entire system is what's important and being able to carry quite a bit of it because it's lightweight in the shadow of Nesmic series gives me that ability because I'm using mainly titanium and brass as far as the stove goes. But because the firebox is a titanium firebox and it folds down very small, and it doesn't take up a lot of weight, I can put a lot of cooking paraphernalia in the same space that could would be taken up by a lot more stuff. I put that on the wrong side. My fault. I wasn't thinking, paying attention there. Um, I can put the same amount of material in a much smaller space because of that, and it allows me to carry a lot of things that allow for adaptability in the same amount of weight that I would be carrying if I were just carrying a couple stainless steel implements. So in the shadow of Nesmic sears and being able to adapt cook systems to different aspects of cooking, you know, this firebox really sets it apart. And I can put that here. I've got another sleeve here that I can put these great tops in right there. They'll fit right in the front of the firebox sleeve just like that close that up you've got your grill that's a flat package that can go in the back of your backpack you know i have the stove i have a bottle of extra fuel and i just keep that in a mesh bag and a titanium pot titanium water bottle and i can cook most anything with that and i have a skillet on the bottom of this that i'll show you guys later on that makes this system even more adaptable it's a skillet that we're working on right now for our titanium bush pot we don't have in stock yet this is the prototype version and i'm not real fond of the way the handles are set up on this so we're trying to get one that folds underneath like our stainless steel skillet does when we get that nested system then we'll have a really nice titanium ultralight system that you can carry backpacking and gives you a lot of versatility to cook. one of the things i thought we could do out here today is kind of take a look at food and food packing in our kit here. This is basically my food bag. This is the bag that goes in my pack. It's one of the last things that goes in there so I can always get to it when I'm on the trail. If there's a snack bar or something that I want in there that I plan on having during the hike that day, I'll generally take it out of here and put it somewhere in the top pocket of my pack, readily accessible so I don't have to undo my pack to get to it. But this is the bag that contains 100% of my food when I'm out and there's at least three days in here probably more like four so we're basically just gonna jump dump it out here kind of separate three things and see what we've got okay I've got a titanium spoon in there as well so bag of bacon jerky that's basically trail snack stuff all right I've got a bag of epic jerky in here again that's trail snack stuff, but anytime you have jerky, you can mix that in with other things to 
give yourself a more hearty meal. And a good example of that are these North sides. And I carry these a lot. This is garlic and herb or herb and butter rice flavor. It's probably what I'm gonna eat tonight. And I'll probably mix some type of meat product in with that that I've got with me, whether that's an individual spam. I don't think I have any of those left in here or whether that is some type of jerky. I've got some sweet and savory traditional here. I've got the pork here, and then I've also got the bacon here. So all three of those are candidates for being mixed in with other foods like these North sides to make individual meals. I've got Parmesan garlic as well. I have some premium white chicken. Again, this could be mixed in with things like rice to make yourself a meal. We may, this is applewood smoke flavored premium chicken. We may use this along with one of our north sides tonight to make our meal. Probably actually going to choose the garlic and Parmesan would probably go really well with that chicken. So we'll set that aside for right now. We have a package of chorizo here, instant Mexican style refried beans. Again, this can be mixed with meat of any kind. I do have a couple bars here. You could cut those up, but those are better trail food. I've got venison and I've got lamb. These are Epic brand. I love Epic brand stuff. It's all really good. It's really nutritious. It's got a lot of protein in it. Six grams of protein in this bar. 100% grass-fed lamb. This is really, really good stuff. But the refried beans just gives me another just add water thing that I could put together. And again, these will all be like main courses. So you've got like three main courses right there, three dinners right there that can be mixed and matched together depending on what you put with them. Then I've got a Nutri-Grain bar here. This thing's pretty well destroyed, but that doesn't mean it's not edible because it definitely is. I've got two trail butters here. Again, these are just quick and dirty on the trail food snacks, real food energy, real food snacks. Squeeze it in and, and, and eat it and you're good to go. Another Nutri-Grain bar there. That's more breakfasty stuff. I got a couple of Oboe chocolate milks here. I've got some Nestle's chocolate syrup or chocolate uh, hot chocolate here. Some Capico instant coffee. This is like a three in one. It's got the sugar, the cream, and the coffee in it. And then I've got three Cinnabon cream of wheat. So what I basically have here is I have breakfast. I have snacks for the trail. And then I have entrees for dinner. So this is easily way easily three days worth of food you know you get up in the morning you grab a snack bar of some kind you grab some instant uh cream of wheat maybe both some coffee or hot chocolate with that hit the trail while you're on the trail you're probably talking snack bars or trail butter while you're on the trail and then when you stop for dinner you're mixing some type of meat with an entree meal like the north side and you're making that and then you can also again eat jerky while you're on the trail if you choose to do that to stop for lunch at one point or another so there's plenty of food here and plenty of calories and it doesn't take up a lot of room or weight and it really depending on what you buy and where you buy it doesn't really cost a lot some of the stuff you know epic trail butter those are a little more expensive um, in your in taste as far as how much they cost to go buy them but things like these great value chicken and north sides that stuff is you know a dollar a dollar, two dollars, something like that. Um, the Capico coffee you can get off Amazon, cream of wheat by the box. Uh, the chorizo rice, I think it comes, or chorizo beans come off of Amazon as well. And then beef jerky, of course, if you just buy brands like Wild Bills, you can get this at any gas station, Walmart, wherever you want to go. And then Epic brand is a little bit more expensive. But you have plenty of food here, like I said, to last for a minimum of three days, probably more like four.
All right, so I'm experimenting with this new light just to kind of see how it does in the dark here. It seems to do pretty good. I'll have to show it to you tomorrow. It's a neat little light that fits on top of your camera, top of your iPhone mount. It's got a filter on it. You can see if I peel it back, it's a different color light. So it's got like a amber color filter on it to make the light a little bit softer. Pretty nice. Very, very compact piece of gear. I'll show it to you guys, like I said, tomorrow or something. For now, we're gonna use it to try to get some light on the subject here at night. I'm really fond of this Transia alcohol stove. The thing just jets right up. And like I said, it fits just the bomb in this firebox stove. It's just a perfect cook system. Let's see about making some supper here. Get some water on the boil. Alright. You're not going to need all of this. And that's the beauty of this stuff is you don't have to use it all at once. We're only going to need about half of this tonight. Probably won't even need half, and then we could eat the other half tomorrow, which extends your food considerably when you do that. I'm going to put about half the bag in there. And we're going to add about half of this chicken in there. Stirring it is the key to keep anything from sticking while you're cooking it. I've let this thing boil good and hard now for that's probably boiled hard for two minutes once I put the chicken in. Give her a few more seconds here to get that foam going really good on the top where it's rising up to the top of the pot. Now we're just going to pull it off here. Set it to the side and put our lid on. Putting our stove out. This is a matter of getting in there and dropping this lid over top of it, just like that. All right, here we go. Nice hot chicken and rice. Probably gonna have to let that cool down just a little bit more before we can even eat it. Good and done though. That'll give us a chance to get our firebox put away here. Make sure alcohol stove's not still hot. really like these alcohol stoves the more i use them the more i like them i carry the pathfinder stainless steel version when i'm not going as ultra light as i'm going right now if i'm trying to carry an ultra light kit i go with this brass trangia because it's smaller and lighter obviously and generally speaking even though this firebox is titanium I kind of switch it back and forth in my kits no matter what, even when I'm carrying stainless steel, everything else, because the stainless steel firebox, I have one, is really extremely heavy. So it's better to carry the titanium one for me, even when I'm carrying everything else in stainless steel. Saving the weight of that firebox is a good thing. And this titanium firebox is bomb proof. I love it. I think it's greatest thing since sliced bread to be honest with you it's liable to do some raining on us tonight before it's over with so I'm kind of moving everything to the inside here my backpack and all this is really pretty much empty now I just kind of live out of that thing 
keep everything pretty close at hand there so I know where everything's at. I can get to it if I need it in the middle of the night. But for the most part, I'll just move everything to the inside for now. That way when I'm ready to retire, that's already done. Got an absolutely beautiful full moon out here tonight. Probably can't see it real well. But it is a gorgeous evening out here for sure. All right, so got ourselves in the old tent here. And try to get situated for the night. See how this climate pad does tonight. Got this light on inside here. It's, makes it pretty bright. Kind of get it situated around here a little bit. And you can see, and where I can see. Definitely making it bright enough in here for me to see. Without a doubt. I'm anxious to try this climate pad and see how it's going to see how it's going to feel. It actually feels pretty good already. It's laying down on it. It's, it feels a lot more padded than it looks, I guess is the way to put it. it. When I first blew it up, I thought, man, this thing's awful thin. I'm not sure how that's going to work out, but it, it actually feels pretty good. Yeah. It actually feels really nice, so. I'm going to it up just a little bit off this pole. In the back behind the hand. There we go. Pretty good. I think I'm gonna leave my jacket on for a little bit here. Get my foot in the foot box, dude. Like that. There we go. Glasses right here. All right. Well, we will see y'all come morning early. Well, my plan this morning was going to be to get up and actually go out here and do a time-lapse sunrise in camp this morning, but <laughs> I got a feeling it's going to start pouring down rain here by any minute. And there's some thunder rolling in, and uh, heard a few raindrops on the tent here and there. It's 6 a.m., so we'll just kind of sit here for a while, play it out, and see what happens. Well, I've been doing quite a bit of raining this morning, and so what I'm kind of doing here, I don't have a lot of light. It's only it's about 6.30, but I'm just kind of getting some of my stuff together. I got my Swagman roll bag here, and get my Swagman roll put up, and uh, just doing some maintenance here inside the tent, things like that right now. It sounds like it stopped raining, so we'll see how long that lasts, but I don't think I'm going to get a sunrise this morning, obviously, which kind of sucks because I really was looking forward to that. I actually orientated this tent just perfect to have a sunrise come up through the door this morning. To get a really cool photograph with some nice shots, but that's okay. You win some, you lose some. We're outdoors. That's all that counts. All right, guys, well, we got the backpack packed up here, except for the duplex. We're going to let it dry out because it did rain for a good hour, maybe a little longer. We're going to go on a scout back here in the back. I heard a couple 
turkey goblin back here. I'm scouting a little bit preseason right now. So I'm gonna take a hike back in here and see if I can figure out where they're roosting. Give this tent some time to dry out and then I'll come back and pack it up. I appreciate you guys joining me for this video last night. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks for your views.